need some research. It smokes, it drinks, it philosophizes. Just let me suck, please. Just let me suck on each one. <laughs> My mouth's bleeding, Bert! My mouth's bleeding! Shall we talk now or wait? Boom. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Out. Gall is late as usual. Not as <laughs> usual. He's not usually late. <laughs> but I will talk shit about him. There's a penalty. Speaking of being late, we started an hour late because our guest was running a little late. Yeah, that's my bad. That's all my bad. Um, all good. Ron yeah. Higgins. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, happy to be doing the podcast swap. I had um, Jay on the on my own podcast, Screenwriting from the Trenches, uh, a few weeks back as a uh, part of my micro budget series. We were talking about his film, Cactus Jack. I'm, what, how does it feel, man? Because it's the film's out now. Like, you know, it's out. It's out. Like, I mean, it's obviously not a huge splash. We actually got PR people that our manager slash producer brought on mm-hmm. who can't get any traction going because all these motherfucking critics are like, I only take stuff from the studios or uh, it's award season. I'm too busy. It's like even when you pay legit, I'm super legit PR guys mm-hmm. within the system. If your movie's not from within the system, they don't give a fuck. And I get it, some $10,000 movie, but it's like, eventually, you're going to review it. Eventually, you're going to hear about it. You're going to have to say something about this motherfucker. So, Well, for me, like, you know, that's the problem with, you know, Hollywood all over. You know, like, you know, even you having to hire, you know, um, like PR people, like you hire gatekeepers. You know what I mean? Which I wouldn't have done. That's our manager doing his part as a producer, thinking that's Mm -hmm. his value add, you know. Chris and I, we always set out to make this thing and just stick it on the internet, see what happens, whatever, you know? Yeah, like, and I I, I feel you on that. I'm, I'm definitely, you know, in terms of, like, you know, one of those people where um, I feel like in today's market, you know, you have to build your own, like, you have to literally build your own studio, and that studio arm includes pre-production, post-production, um, talent, like actors that you got on call, um, as well as crew, um, as well as a promotional arm. You know what I mean? You got to build like separate apparatuses, but then each one of them, like it can't look like you're building a studio. They have to have their own independent arms of sorts. You sort of get like, yeah, yeah, like, you know, like I'm building this arm to do this. But it can't look like that. And then it's like at the some same DARPA time, CIA shit. Yeah, <laughs> they know and about each other. They know. Yeah, exactly. And then you know, each one is like out there doing its own thing. Um, you know, and and the con- using the content of 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 one arm to feed the other ones. You know what I mean? The problem um, is time is money. People value their time. They want to be paid. How do you get talent, like you said, without paying people? Eventually, you got to start paying people. You can't just make free shit. Well, that's the thing. Like, I I feel like that you can pay people, but like, I feel like it's not going to look like it's. It'll look more like it did. Like, to be perfectly honest, the way it did in like the 30s and 40s, where you had like actors sort of like like sort of like attached to studios. Like, you can't get you know this actor unless you're working. Unless you're uh, you know you fuck with RKO. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unless you're like. You know, unless you're the movie's coming out through RKO, you can't fuck with this actor. Um, and it's just coming up from that in like an indie film kind of way where like, you know, I might be able to get like, I would love to have my friend Paul. He's sag, unfortunately, but like, I would love to have my friend Paul, um, you know, and just be like, hey, man, um, here's what to do. Like, you know, if I can like roll out and make sure that you get paid like 70 grand a year. And we make sure you got you on this health plan. Like, you know, we're going to do like two movies a year, you know, like with you or whatever like that. And however many things for the internet and stuff like that. And we're just going to pay you like that. Like there yeah, it is. Essentially you set up a corporation that has the HR department and payroll and all that. Mm-hmm. Chris and I, again, I might've mentioned this when we were in your podcast, but we've talked for ages about why can't there be an advent of a creative middle class? It's all mm-hmm. sort of boom or bust rags or riches. And it's like, yeah, can I make 70 grand, even 60 grand, depending on where you live in, whatever. Right. Some health insurance. And that, and that's Stop. the thing. But the, the differences would be like, hey, you are free to 
if you're out there, you know, you are free to go and, and be in other movies. You know, we'll schedule our stuff out beforehand. But as long as you don't interfere with these dates, you are free to go out and get right. whatever other jobs that Unlike you want the to. true studio system. Right. But like, you know, but we have you for these dates. While we have you for these dates and we need you to promote these things, we got you. But like in the in the meantime, be free. Like, <laughs> yeah, go out it's just where you do you get do. that 70 grand to lock up Paul? Right, exactly. Thing, man. It's like, so, I mean, that shit could be an ocean away if you're making thousand dollar movies like we were talking about on Twitter. Right. You know? And my movies never really shoot more than like, I mean, the, I think the longest shoot that we ever had was like 17 days across like three months. Yeah. Um, you know, like, but for them, <laughs> that was kind of an extreme case. That was our first movie. You know, that was an extreme case. But for the most part, like the movies that we shot, um, I'm on my third, fourth feature, fourth, fourth feature, fourth, fourth, uh, she's in the details, um, around the world, Barbara. Yeah. For, I'm on my fourth feature and I don't think any of them will cross over like seven days. The, the other of the other three, um, you know, cause we like around the world is our best so far. And that one was shot in four and a half. So, you know, just <laughs> straight. Um, just that was scripted. Did you guys rehearse? No, that was actually very scripted. I just got lucky in that again, Paul, um, you know, but Paul and, and, uh, and our lead actress, Lauren happened to be, uh, friends and they got together and they did, um, you know, they, they sort of met up and were doing rehearsals with each other, like, you know, at their apartment when they were both in Los Angeles and we would do, we did a few zoom rehearsals back before that shit was cool um you know like back in like circa 2013 and um we did a couple zoom rehearsals and we talked about it and when they showed up they were just ready and i shoot fast um like i had all my camera angles like like out i didn't have a dp the first day so we only shot a half a day i shot what i could do and then when i got back i'd already shot a movie with my dp who happens to be a genius and he just, he's like my work husband. And we just got in there and we just killed it. Um, I also let the camera run long takes. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I like if it, the scene's going and we have, and I haven't, it, it, I wait for a scene to break. And that's how you get some good shit. Like if the scene <laughs> is moving and the actors are feeling it and I just, I'll just let it go until the scene breaks, go. Like There's having, nothing worse than your actors sitting there with their thumbs in their asses for 40 minutes while some dude tries to set up lights and they're mm -hmm. all on ice. Now you're like, all right, not Daniel Day-Lewis, go. <laughs> Be brilliant. You know, it's fucking it's a right. tall I'm order. famous for long takes. Like, I, I, you know, my actors are always surprised because they're like, wait, are we doing, are we going through the whole thing? I'm like, yeah, we're going through the whole thing. Just, you know, feel it, go through it. Like whatever, mm -hmm. like we blocked out this part, but you know, if you move in, I remember there's, there's a, it's in the movie too. There's a bit where like, you know, Lauren gets up off the bed and around the world and she just starts putting on his shirt, uh, like the Paul shirt. And I didn't have her scripted to do it, but she just looked good. It was just business that she was doing. Exactly. And the two of them just like kept having this conversation. He gets up and goes to start talking to her. And I'm just like, I'm behind Nick, just sort of like, all right, move to the left, move to the right, stand up, like going through it. And it's just this long, like 10 minute take. And it was just beautiful. And then finally the scene broke. And then I was like, good, we got it. Move on. Like mm -hmm. I'm not doing it again. Fuck it. Let's move on. Like I got, I got what I, I think. Need. It's nice too to not give your actors like the perfect business, etc. Mm -hmm. Because that way they kind of get in the moment and like a real person would start looking around the room. What am I going to interact? What with? am I doing? I'm yeah, nervous, like you know, I'm, you I'm know. not just sitting here talking. Yeah, right. But I'll just, Fincher does the same thing, except he does. You know, he does it after like, you know, he waits for the actors to do like 100 takes or like like 20 takes. Yeah, fuck all that. And then, yeah, and then tw take 21, the actors are so exhausted. They just start doing whatever. And so <laughs> that's when he's like, all right, we're ready to Kubrick shoot. Kubrick was similar. Kubrick I'm like, oh my shit, God. But, uh, to me, that's insane. I'm much But if more... you've got $90 million, you know, you can get away with that shit, you know? Yeah, but I don't even think I would want to do it. Like, what are you looking for? What are you just putting people through? I'm too conscientious for that shit. Yeah, man. You know I, what I mean? Is yeah. that, I don't know. I'm not trying to waste or waste time, especially on the kind of budgets we're working at. You're not paying your actors fucking $8 million either or whatever. No, 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 no. But no. that Eastwood thing, three takes. Let's get it in three takes, mm -hmm. you know? 
that's what I did with Gall. Once we started shooting and we had day one, we got rid of the crew and I just did it all myself. I was like, I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes to light. And we got three takes tops. That's it. Let's run and gun you and me. Yeah. Spielberg is like that. Uh, um, um, uh, Ridley Scott is like that as well. Three takes. That's it. Um, and, and that's all about casting. You know what I mean? He's just trusting actors to do this thing. Yeah. Ed Burns tells this great story about Spielberg where he's like, um, you know, they did like 12 takes of, of a scene one time. And then at lunch, they went up to him. They were like, Steve, what happened, man? Like, we've been doing three, four takes and now we're doing like 12. Like, what happened? He was like, well, the yesterday y'all knew what the hell y'all was doing today you didn't so you know <laughs> right yeah it's like, like how prepared are you which of course is also part of the director's right. job to prepare the actors but sometimes it's different like with gall he'd come in not even knowing what the fuck he was gonna be saying that day I'd yeah it on him so it's it's different depending on the shoot and what you're after you know I can't no believe because you said it was like lightly scripted, like Captain Jack was like lightly no, no. scripted or, or or mostly there's like no, you know. there's no structural script. I mm -hmm. scripted all his rants. All the dialogue yeah. scripted. Yeah. Um, there's no way he'd come up with that shit on his own. I was he gonna did. say, but if like he came but up with even that still, ad living, I wouldn't even want to know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like you were a little bit too real with this motherfucker. Like you you right. hiding some from me. But no, like, you know, um I, I you know, I've said it before, like I said it on a podcast, you know, like Gall is like he's like there, man. Like, you know, he kind of like, you know, certain people that just get there. And I think that's the problem. You know, um, you know, one of the things that I that I have with um I think a lot of independent um films is that we get it's hard to, you know, like you said, on these budgets where we're not really paying people, and if we are paying people, it's not much. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard to attract like real talent. Um, you know, you might get a few and then you end up working with those people like over and over again. But like, you know, for the rest of the time, you know, it's really hard to sort of find folks who are like who are capable of making choices. You know, the dialogue is one thing. And, you know, I, I certainly have an idea in my head uh, of what I think it should sound like and what it should look like. But at the same time, there's nothing that you love more than an actor who's going to surprise you with a choice. For sure. Um, and so, you know, I think the audience is looking for the exact same thing. Like they hear the dialogue and they're like, all right, well, okay, I, that's the obvious choice, but they want somebody to do something different. Um, and, you know, if you watch uh, the one thing that I'm sort of getting, um, and it seems weird that it's taken me this long to sort of realize this, but you watch like a lot of, you know, um, mainstream movies, um, you see these actors making big choices that are not necessarily quote unquote realistic, mm -hmm. but like at the same time, it's, it's, you know, it's within a persona that works for a Will Smith or, a, or a Tom Cruise or, a, a, or, a, um, you know, like a, a like a Viola Davis or anything like that. Although Viola uh, Viola Davis, I will say, is is, is subtle as hell. Yeah, um, that woman can do shit with her eyebrow that 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 right. other actors can't even touch. But um, that big you know, choice, you, though, there's something to be said. It's the thespian versus the star, and it's mm -hmm. you know we love these these iconic movie moments. They're usually made from going a little over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, or like somebody power. pulling it back. Or, Look at or Jack going. in The Shining. I mean, he's yeah. flicking his tongue out. His eyebrows are all over the place. I mean, he's going, he's big insane. Performance. Yeah. Um, you could play that and, low key and it would be creepy as shit. Yeah. But it's just now it's iconic. It's yeah. printed in our yeah. brains. You ever see that? Like, I, I've seen the, there's a lot of behind the scenes footage of that movie. And the, you see that scene where like Jack is like right before he does the act scene. He's huffing and, and he's puffing like, and amping himself. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, jumping up and down, like get like hyping himself up, and you're just like, this motherfucker's <laughs> about oh. to get in it. That energy is is palpable. Even just like before they start rolling, he's like, ah, oh. and you're like, I mean, Oof. Jack's the fucking man. That's another thing. They don't make him like that no more. Good luck finding a Jack Nicholson. Yeah, you know, out in the world. I mean, shit. Gene Hackman's all those kind of dudes. They're kind of gone. Yeah, there's it's a different kind of uh, of of thing. Um, although I will say, like you know, sort of a modern equivalent might be like a Jake Gyllenhaal. Like yeah. I watch, um, Jake's amazing. I love that motherfucker. Everything. Yeah, he does is he's great. He makes fucking choices. insane. Yeah, but yeah. I watched, um, I watched um, Nightcrawler recently. Yeah, which is you know I'm sure you appreciate that movie. Um, sure. You know, 
I'm watching that and I'm just watching this dude. Like there's a moment where he's just sitting in the car and you just get to see his character just having a quiet moment by himself. Thank you. And his eyes are dead. Like you're watching, he is not out of character. It, there's no dialogue. There's nothing that he's actually supposed to do besides like be in this car right now. But you're looking at him and he is just dead. And this it's not a moment wasted. You know what I mean? Like he's making choices with his body language and his eyes and his face that I'm like, that. here is an acting masterclass in 30 seconds. For sure. Can you do this? Because if you can't, you need to start aiming for that. Because this motherfucker is really right there. He has no dialogue and he is doing some of the best acting I have ever seen in my fucking life. And you just like, if you can do this, you will always work. That is you know what's sad <laughs> is people are scared to write those scenes. That's what mm-hmm. sucks. And Hollywood does that to you too, because those subtle scenes always die in development. Mm-hmm. People or in the over editing. them. They didn't yeah. even fucking get them. They, you know, this is blue <laughs> scene. It's like, Dude, that's going to be the scene on right. screen. They can't. Uh, it amazes me how many people work in development in Hollywood, but they can't do that thing where they transition in their mind from the page to the screen. Like, isn't that the whole game we're playing? To be able to read a script and be able to see the movie in your head? Like, what the fuck is happening? I don't know, man. Like, no, I, consi- it's more about the read than what's going to be on the screen. It's stupid. Trying try to like figure out what what Hollywood is doing, and like constantly. I remember getting um, a short list uh, for a movie that that um, was oh, about to go in production. Fucking look at this fucking loser. Where you been? <laughs> oh, how much of you cutting him off did I fucking miss? <laughs> Uh, we've been doing all right. Did, are, doing are, okay. both of the, are both of the people who are going to watch this going to be disappointed? Is that it? <laughs> I, I need to be early or some shit. I was shitting. My well, you dads. might get like, you know, like a, like a spillover from my audience might, you know, come over. I'm hoping anyway. But like, you know. Yeah, he doesn't this, care about them either. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, like, I remember getting a short list for a movie and um, that I was trying to do. And like at number five, was like this, uh, was like uh, Sebastian Stan. Sebastian Stan, the AKA the Winter Soldier, yeah. you know, AKA the lead of a, of a Marvel TV series. He was at number five for like the second lead in a, in a, in a, in a, in a $1 million movie. And I remember like, you know, here getting notes from the studio, them being like, you know, well, they don't think this guy's a household name. That's why he's like number five. And I'm like, what world? In what world do you think this Marvel actor is is just who would definitely be slumming it to do this movie is not right. like some sort of <laughs> name? He's not big enough to open this tiny little movie that you're doing. Get the fuck he out of here. His own man. Marvel movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, six months later, that dude was on billboards and that movie wasn't anything. So right. fuck off. Like, you know, like Hollywood, I, I swear to God, I, I there's the, there's so many egos. Where people just feel like they're like they're they're gonna take their little thing and be Jurassic Park, and I'm just like I don't I don't know how you look in the mirror like what do you see, who are you, like where where are you what what air are you breathing I don't understand what is happening and why you don't why you seem to be so divorced from reality that you're just like that's you know blah like you know I but you know that's I mean people do fail upwards shit I, that is true. That is very true. Um, I, I see that all the time. All the, the time. Thing, not to pay Gall a compliment like he deserves it or anything, but <laughs> that shit we were talking about earlier with the casting, that was the kind of the thing. I looked around in Milwaukee. No offense to Milwaukee folks. You know the fucking score. Let's be realistic. Like you just said, let's know the... Let's look at... Have a, have a little self-awareness, right? Right. I knew he was somebody who could be like nuclear grade, carry this little movie. So I'm going to make it for the most part a fucking one man show because right. as soon as you take your indie movie and you start populating it with these shittier actors, it's just going to bring his performance down the whole thing. Right, 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 right. You, know? so you start nobody's, deleting the shit. Like, you nobody's know. interested in hearing anyone but me speak in that film. Let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> well, and I did go through a few people with some of those voiceover roles. I'm like, nah, not doing it. And that's the thing. I was like, let's hey, just let's recut it with me roles. playing both people. <laughs> let's be honest with ourselves. 
And you you want to do that after the movie's been released? You call it the Renegade Cut. I would, which would for me like a Renegade Cut of your movie. I'd be like, there's a more Renegade Cut version of this. Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, drawing Muhammad scene and shit. <laughs> be like, what the fuck? We got some the shit. Renegade Cut. Be like the in every versus. role. We did talk about that at one point. Like modulate your voice. You're the mom. You do the. That's right. You were. Yeah. You we were gonna try that. Yeah, I really kind of wanted to. I kind of wish I had to a degree in the end, but I think Sam's face is great and shit. Oh, it. Sam crushed it, dude. Sam crushed it. I would say, you know, I was kidding. There are two people in, in the Milwaukee area that should be heard. Yeah, Sam's, Sam's awesome. And there's a few and others, the but others. it's just like, you never know. And then, then there's the whole thing of scheduling motherfuckers, period. Mm-hmm. Just all of it. Like, no, just go as small as possible. Yeah, that's the thing. For me, like I, I feel like I, I had this idea, like I'm I'm trying to convince my wife. Like there, like I had we had this idea that we wanted to do like this basically this three-person character piece. But then I was like, as the the problem that I had a writer with, code for trying to talk your wife into a threesome. No, 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 no. Okay. I I, the, I don't know that I would necessarily have to like work that hard about that one. But like right. that one, like <laughs> um, you know, that one I was like, all right, well, what if like I don't think this is a movie. I think this is a television show. And the look on her face was like, no. Like not only just no, but Negro is you crazy? No. It was like one of those kind of things. And I was just like, no. I, I really feel like you could do it. But the, the idea of doing like a three person television show is kind of insane. Like, like where all you like, only is there have- any comp to that? Like. Uh- <laughs> Horace and Pete, maybe the closest kind of shit or something, where it's just in the bar and. But even they, they had like a yeah, whole bar full of comes people. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm just saying, like if you just did like a, where the the episode is going to be about one of the three of them, and or two of the three of them, and then you just sort of do that, and you just sort of base it around like that, and you can keep it interesting for like a half an hour, um, half an hour, forty minutes. Can you do that? Like, I've never seen it. But like That's I said, cool there's a challenge no... to try and undertake. But uh, yeah, it might be tough. And I was like, I think I can. I think I, not only can I do that, I can get away with that. I think I can do that. But then it, again, then again, something like that would be essentially be what I've always wanted to do, which is pull the Robert Rodriguez of TV. I want the 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 independent TV story. I want to pull the like. Uh, you know, that sold my body for science, you know, uh, and then made a movie for $7,000. I want that Cinderella story for television. I want to do that and then like end up on a, on a Hulu or something like that. I want to do it just so I can have that and just live off of it for the rest of my life. Like the fucking Duplass brother. Um, I don't know, man. It's weird. Chris and I had started to break into TV and actually had some success with a couple of pilots. We, so sold a TV pitch and shit, but man, I'm kind of even though the feature market's fucking brutal, I'm kind of back to that because to me it's like TV is marriage. Mm-hmm. I'm doing features, that's like fucking Tinder, basically. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like TV, you get stuck here on the show for how many seasons possibly, and all these people that you got to basically be married to. But see, like, then man, again, that goes back to our model, though, because if if you well, are if you do a three person show, yeah, right. Well, no, but not only that, but like if you have like that model where you know this television, like you could, like if you if you can sell it, if you know that it's like it's got a home, so you got it, and then you're married to it for multiple seasons, then you can do something where you're like, you know, you take these actors and you sign them to your company and they're like, you know, you guys do whatever, but we got you for the show. Like we got to do this thing. Mm -hmm. And so y'all do whatever you want out there in the world, but you know, we got you for these dates for the show and then just have them on staff and then build your stuff around it. Like I, 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 I dig it and you could create a new model and then, you know, just do that. And you don't have to deal with these, these, this other bullshit of like so many gatekeepers and going through and and having to do this ish. I remember being the most excited that I've ever been about a thing like recently was not recently, but within the last few years was when I heard the Duplass brothers sold like seasons two, I think it was two and three of Room 104. Like they shot them both back to back 
And then they were just like, like they're just a content house. Like they were just doing that. And Again, that's I'm so like, smart though, conceptual. Right? Like it's a fucking room, and there's a different story in it every month. You know? Exactly. <laughs> like I think that will probably be like the only sort of like uh, like equivalent to my three person television idea, where you're just like, you know, you got a room, and you just redress it like every because you know the thing about a hotel room is that or a motel room, I think, is that it, it's anonymous. You know, anybody, everybody goes in that room. They're all going to have different experiences. So, you know, being able to do something like that um, and having that kind of content that you can just batch do, then sell. Like, if you can do that, that's the fucking dream. Then what do I need any of this other bullshit for? And if my shit is good, then other people will come to me and be like, I want to do weird shit like that. I want to do cool that's shit. That's what it all comes down to. Is your shit good? Because here's the sober right. truth, though. We keep talking about these new models because we don't like the model that exists and the experience mm -hmm. of it and the process. But the consumer, they don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. It's like they got a huge pipeline of high budget shit being thrown at them all the time. They're not dying to see our little independent things where we're roaring against the machine or whatever. So it better be damn good. Or I don't know though, because just be I'll, so niche that you find your little audience and just cater to them, you know. I think to a certain extent, depending on what kind of audience, I think you guys like, you know, have a thing because you guys are are like, you know, um, you guys are in the horror genre uh, to a certain extent. I mean, you like, you know, you guys are yeah. billing it as a horror. And right. so, you know, you go to um, you know, I have uh, two friends of mine, um, you know, they're both, one of them is an indie horror guy, but like, you know, the other one is an indie horror fan and they started this podcast called, you know, um, Camp Nightmare. And those guys are really doing very well. Um, and they have, they started from like, I, like I, they started from nothing and I know these guys, but within the horror community, you know, their love is extremely palpable and so they go to these conventions and then the convention started hiring them to like moderate what, talk to, what yeah. i'm hearing what i'm hearing you say my spectacle friend is that mm -hmm. you're going to talk to your friends and get us on their podcast <laughs> well god wants to get on the the convention circuit <laughs> yeah see I, I i might be able to hook that up for you I'll, I'll i'll talk to my i'll talk to my people and and, and see what's up um because i think they'd be great like you know that that you know your movie is definitely right up their alley so but they do that you know they they like you know they they go to conventions and they do the things and i think once you guys got in with like conventions and stuff like that the horror community just like embraces you like they just you know they love it and they they want to be about it and like horror fans we were talking about this uh, i think a few episodes ago on my podcast like horror fans i wish i could get the kind of love that horror fans have for superhero fans like you know there's a whole argument being had right now about she hulk and like this is the worst thing that marvel's ever done i mean it's the most comic book accurate thing i feel like that they've ever done but yeah like, have you ever people... read a marvel comic from the right have you, 80s or right <laughs> have you ever fucking read this these comics but it's the most comic book accurate i think that they've ever done but that like there's this discussion happened of like this, you know like but at the same time you know you have like you know, $20,000 movies, like, you know, like I, I remember, you know, a lot of people, there were multiple people that I know were hardcore horror fans that were telling me to watch They Look Like People, uh, which is a $20,000 horror movie. It's fantastic. Um, yeah. Um, like that movie, like, you know, got a, a distribution deal and was on Netflix and all this other kinds of stuff, but it was just, it had like this very strong vocal like audience um you know you can do a, a thing like a, a paranormal activity mm -hmm. and I mean, for every one of them there's fucking a hundred thousand just dead in the water codes uh -huh. and shit <laughs> but then like you know you also like i'm from maryland so like you know blair, blair witch, witch is huge yeah. huge it is fucking huge yeah, um, I, mean, I mean blair Witch should be huge this shit's seminal but it was also mm -hmm. like fucking 30 years ago Exactly. But it's still like a big deal. You know, people like, you know, sure, sure. and I'm friends with the guy with the, uh, one of the directors of the film, Eduardo Sanchez. Um, we and I, he lives like, you know, like 45 minutes from me. Um, and we're constantly talking about stuff. But he's like, you know, he's kind of like a, a, a deity. Um, uh, um, like, <laughs> like, well, dude, they struck it big. Among us. How much money did he actually make from that shit? Because obviously uh, the movie made hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, but they screwed him on that. Right, you know? of course. Like yeah. the deal, when they picked it up, I'm sure, it was a shit deal, right? Yeah, it was a shit deal. Um, really? You know, but 
you know, like <laughs> it's a shit deal, but it also yeah. they can't it's they can't excise him from <laughs> they can't excise him from from uh from Blair Witch. Like he is intrinsically like tied to it. They could never like erase him from that. And that's the kind of thing that I want. Like, even if like the studio stole something from you essentially, where it's so tied to you that they can't that they have to march you out. You know what I mean? Like every oh, time they want to do something with it. Right. Um, yeah, like every time they do something with Terminator, you know, it, no, they always have to like get James Cameron's opinion on it, you know, just because he made that tiny little independent film um, like back in the day. You know, they were like, what does James yeah, Cameron think about this new like, shit version? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> we need to get we need to get Cactus Jack so the standard for this kind of thing that anytime anybody says the n-word or cunt or faggot in a movie they have to consult with you jay dude we get a royalty on every cunt usage in a movie i'm just kidding wow go on carry on but yeah like you know that that's definitely (laughs) like you know i I do think that like you know if you did a like your movie could um sort of like develop like a kind of cult following like that kind of like because it does seem like one of those midnight showing oh yeah like Like, kind of like put it in a theater kind of the thing like you could do like you know every halloween or um you know um especially since it (laughs) takes place right around halloween um you know it could be one of those things where you you could i like i would lean into it like you know See if you can sort of not to necessarily, you know, say that, um, you know, it's not going to be like uh, Rocky Horror where people are fucking dancing, Throwing you know, but, shit, yeah. but like human centipede yeah. kind of shit like in that the room. category. Yeah. Yeah. Like the room. Like- yes. The room. Um, you know, that kind of thing where, you know, then where you could sort of set it up um you know, and if you could do something really nuts where you could get like a bunch of, you know, liberals and a bunch of Nazis where like at the end of the movie, there's just an all out brawl and they just kick the shit out of each other. Um, like I, I, I would Great show publicity. up for that. Yeah. yeah, I know. I would show up for that. I'd be like, fuck, man. Like it's, this is going to be a brawl. We're going to fuck with the Nazis. Fuck so it, man. You, I'm all in. If you have a swastika tattoo or wearing a pussy hat, you get in half price. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just Some promotional it would be, shit. It would be so tense, like like you know, because it would you be clear both, sides. You have movie. like like one people, like what is either one group is sitting in the front and one group is sitting in the back, or one group is sitting on one type one side of the theater. Oh my god, could you imagine side. identity politics segregated seating? Mm-hmm. Latin and that, like sits here, and everybody else is like <laughs> like they're all looking at each other across the like the way for the, like the whole of the movie because they know the shit's about to go into a fight and then at the end of it it's just like an all out fucking brawl um you know and then just people like and then Some afterwards bastard shit could, yeah i could see like even like afterwards like after everybody's cut kick the shit out of each other where they're just like all right let's get a beer you know what i mean and like they're all sitting at a bar and just being like you know what like fucking like you hit me fucking good, dude. Like I felt that in the back of my throat, dude. Like you hit. <laughs> I thought you were a pussy, dude, but you hit the fuck out of me, man. And be like, yeah, man. I'm. I, I really hate you. Be like, I hate you too, dude. Like that was a, that was a fucking great punch. It's a fucking great punch, you know. And they're just sitting down and just like having like a common yeah, like conversation. Jack could heal America, right? And at the end, like they go back, like the Nazis go back and be like, dude, this fucking faggot, man, just fucking punched the shit out of me. Like, <laughs> Fuck, man, I'm going to feel that for like a week, man. Like, you know what I mean? And they're just like <laughs> telling all their friends. <laughs> I mean, we did make this movie to unite people. I mean. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. sometimes yeah. violence uh, is the answer. Um, <laughs> fuck, man. What a... Sometimes violence is the answer. That's a direct quote. Um, yeah, you know, nice. Yeah. But yeah, so... <laughs> the title of this episode rob higgins sometimes violence is the answer um <laughs> violence is always the answer but you know like i you know that kind of like avant-garde shit you know if Honestly, i had made the movie that like you guys made i would just lean into it like fuck it you i can't i you can't go like you know you can't do anything else like you know you're already going to offend everyone you know what i mean it doesn't sure. fucking you matter. know what my problem is 
I'm totally down <laughs> for leaning in on that and everything. God damn, you sound disgusting. Do you have COVID? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's it's beautiful. <laughs> um, the fuck. I'm all down to lean in on this, go 100% whatever, but my problem is just as a creative, I already made the motherfucker. I want to start making the next thing. I don't want to yeah. be married to this shit, trying to trot it out forever. And that's you know, the Jay, this audience. It's like, but Jay, Jay, you remember uh, last week when we were talking to G Marie? Yeah. And she said something really interesting at the end of this. Get as creative where your marketing. It's like two movies, like the afterlife of the mm-hmm. movie, the marketing of it is its own project. Right. And she was, she was right. You know, I mean, we're doing this. We've been doing this ever since. Uh, since the premiere and then it slowed down and now we're doing this again where yeah. we're going on podcasts and shit and it's basically like an apology tour we're trotting me out <laughs> it is it is we're trotting me out in front of people going see no he's a nice guy he's a grandpa he's like a, a no- <laughs> fuck that fuck that yeah. no i want to talk about this guy was late because he got pulled over in a stolen car that's why you weren't on time isn't it no 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 <laughs> you got no, no, pulled no. over for not having license plates on your car no, I, I actually, like, I kind of blew my life up, um, like, in the last week. Um, like, I, I've always been... Um, uh, it's amazing how you just let that troll pass like that. I yeah, love that. Fucking amazing I love that. On your I, you know what? never heard measured, shit like so. that before from an old white guy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, you have to work harder at that guy. Yeah, was this <laughs> a mockumentary or a documentary? All right. Yeah. Um, like... I've had motherfuckers pull guns on me. You ain't got nothing on me, man. Like I, I stay like my wife tells me about that all the time. Cause I've been, you know, when we, we, she's been in a car when I've been pulled over by cops and cops are like, you got a dim tag, like get out of the car. And I'm like, are you okay, one of those officer. dudes who are like, I know my fucking rights. You can't do it. Or you no, cause I'm going home. Are you trying to yeah. get me shot? I'm like, exactly. for me, it's like, you know, I'm Just like, comply. all right, officer. Cause I'll stand there and t- take a look at this dim tag light that you can't even write me a ticket for what you going to do now. Right. What? All right. That you told me the tag is dim. We looked at it. What you gonna do now? Because like I'm not gonna give you a reason to hit me. Right. So we both standing there, and I got a shit eating grin on my face because you can't do anything to me. Go ahead, try to write me up for something. Go ahead. So I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna stand there because I know that's the end of the conversation. You can't do anything to me. I've broken no laws. Um. So like you know, make something up. Go ahead. Try it. You on camera, motherfucker. I'm not. Like. <laughs> not doing anything, not doing a goddamn thing. So, you know, whatever. It doesn't bother me. Let me ask you me. a question. This is something actually what's going to put on our wheel, which we can spin if we run out of shit to talk about. But uh, platforming, you have a podcast. Mm-hmm. Did you have any trepidation, like when it came to putting us on? Because what if these guys are actually a couple of hate mongers or whatever? Or in general, do you have any trepidation of? putting someone on who you don't disagree with or you think might be dangerous or are you just like, fuck it. I'll talk to anyone, anytime. I'll talk to anyone at any time. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I, I err on the side of, of like, um, of censorship. I don't like censorship. Um, I, I do, I do feel like, you know, in terms of, you know, there are extreme examples. Like if Hitler had a Twitter account, I'd be like, all right, shut that down, shut it down. Um, you know, obviously what about Trump. But, Trump, same thing, um, because down. You, well, because the 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 amount of Trump's Twitter was so no, I can't. Divisive isn't even a strong enough word. Trump's Twitter was giving the entire country anxiety, like that. True. That the whole country was living in a state. I'm, I'm talking not even just from the left. The people on the left and the right. Everyone was living in a state of anxiety because the president, the, 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 the leader of the free world, essentially, was saying, would say the craziest shit. Like, think Rosie of the- Donald's a pig. <laughs> like, no, but even like Kofefe, you president. know what I mean? It was like, yeah. Kofefe was like a thing for like a typo. It was like a yeah. news story for a whole fucking week while people Hamburger. tried to- Yeah. Hey, tried to, I got a problem. I think there should be a law passed where- media outlets are not allowed to quote or highlight tweets they can't (laughs) report on tweets as if tweets are news yeah tweets are nothing but commentary like you're doing like you might as well be commenting on what fox news said and you're just but think about that think about the the freedom twitter uh, think about what people could get away with like oj simpson would be on twitter constantly going 
And then I was actually trying to chop the bitch's head off. Right. And I Twitter. had to run away because a dog okay, bite. And you could tweet it and be safe. That should be that should be like like a safe zone. You should be able to say any fucking thing you want. I miss actually Trump being president just just because of that shit. Like you'd get up in the morning and someone would go, "Oh God, did you see what Trump tweeted?" And <laughs> right, it would be yeah. Kind of that was every like, oh, day. Fuck. It was like, "Oh God, did he treat? He tweeted something today." The you problem know is I mean? people care so much. If people weren't so invested mm-hmm. in this bullshit system in these two parties, we all would have just laughed at it every day. Right. But once he but once his Twitter account was gone, like it was it the 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 country and the the people on the right will never admit this, but they just all sort of breathed the collective sigh of relief. It was just like, oh thank God. Like that is just like one thing that we just do not have like on top of us. Like there's one thing that you can just pull off the pile. I don't have to worry about this because nobody gives a fuck what Trump says on Truth Social. No one gives a fuck no. about that. <laughs> not one fucking person. Uh, and so, like you know, other than the 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 complete you know what extreme MAGA hats. But now the the day the wake up every morning thing is oh god is Joe gonna fall down and break his hip. <laughs> Like it's boring now. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. He got it's canceled boring. for tweeting. He peed himself boring, a little. Yeah. It's it, you know, there's like nothing exciting going on. Well, I think what's really funny to me right now is like the Republicans <laughs> trotted out the um, the audio of uh, you know uh, Joe Biden leaving a a voicemail for his son Hunter, um, you know, in the middle of their you know their substance abuse crisis. You know, I think it was like circa 2014, and they brought that out like. This is going to damage Joe Biden before the, the 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 midterms, and I'm like, are you fucking idiots? So fucking blind that you can't see that the country is in the middle of an opioid crisis. Right, you just this made him just, relatable as shit, right. to Everybody, you're just going to humanize him. They're like, I know so many parents who are going through this right now, and you want to you want to make him look like one of us? Good fucking job, morons. Because the opioid crisis doesn't care what political affiliation you are. There are people of all stripes, all creeds, all races, you know, like dealing with folks who are having like uh, substance abuse problems. So you want to play like a, a thing that makes him sound like a loving, concerned father to his children? Good fucking job, you morons. They're all like, stupid. They think everything they get is some kind of gotcha or smoking gun. It's just like, stop it. Because they're, they're divorced from reality. It's yeah. like the, it's that you know it's that sort of the thing that we that you guys you know were talking about you know while on the podcast where you're like you know it's that you know that mother night thing. Be careful what you pretend to be because in the end you you are who you pretend to be. Yep. And like these people have been living atop Mount Crazy for so fucking long, they can't fucking they can't see you know there's no sanity left up there on Mount Crazy. They just live in the crazy. And so the idea of a concerned father leaving a heartfelt voicemail to his son who has a substance abuse addiction, that, ooh, it's, I got you now. And it's like, mm-hmm. what? But to but them, then he, he, he ceased to be a son with an addiction problem when he became uh, Ukrainian energy fucking right. manipulating. The laptop. <laughs> right. That laptop so you, shit's so crazy. Like, yeah, you're just like, see, the fact he had the dude a is blind and shit. Like the guy who's the shop is blind. Like I, if you wrote this, you'd be like, shut the fuck up. Right. It's insane. It's just it. It was so it's so weird to me that like that's that's where they're like they like I said they can't see, you know, the crazy anymore. Like they can't like. You know, any party that would <laughs> that would that would literally put someone like Herschel Walker up on their <laughs> on the, on their shoulders and then, you know, then turn around and be like, I don't care that he's crazy. I don't oh, yeah. care. I just want to win. I just want to win an election. I'll, I'll put a crazy man and I'll put a crazy man in office. I don't give a fuck. I just want to take a seat from a Democrat. When you've reached that point where you're willing to just like put a literal crazy person a person who has a literal brain injury and who makes no sense. <laughs> and like, you know, the kind of person who answers questions like, did you give a woman $700 for an abortion inside of a gift card? I don't know. I give a lot of people cards, um, you know, like <laughs> I was going to answer questions like that. And you like you would stand next to that person. You know what I mean? To her, like, Walker's the- going to be president. You see idiocracy. He's like a laid oh, back. Oh, my God. The Lord. Don't even put that out in the fucking Camacho. universe, man. Like, I, oh. you know, that is like, it's <laughs> weird to me. Like, I've always said this, and this, this sort of ties into your movie. Like, if you find yourself 
on the same side of the fence as the KKK or the Nazis, you fucked up. You seriously fucked up. And if you can't, if you can't recognize that, if that's not a thing that's in your head, if you're like, well, you know, the ends justify the means. I'm like, motherfucker, you were standing next to the clan. Who, what the <laughs> fuck are your ends? Do you right. see where you are? Do you see where your feet are? You are in quicksand. You are in fucking quicksand. And if you can't recognize that, I don't know what, where the fuck your head is at. You were standing next to the, you was, they're right there. They're would right you, there. Would you have a clan member on your show? <sighs> Depends on the context. Because I think back, Gerardo, Donahue, mm-hmm. those dudes that have them on. The clan didn't blow up. It wasn't, you know what I mean? It's like you have it them depends. on like to if, Socratically if, dismantle them, you know? Right. If, if I'm having a clan member on because he's like, you know, he's like, he's doing a documentary about, you know, um, about the fact that like, you know, what horrible shit he believed, 100% would do it. But if you're doing a clan member who's like, I just did a modern remake of like Birth of a Nation. Uh, okay, well, fuck that guy. Like, I don't <laughs> I don't need to. What about? That what about just having him on, not film related? He's yeah, not a filmmaker. Just, just, I'm, I'm this. You're that. Tell me say why you think me. the way you do. Say it right. to me. Convince me why I'm not fucking human. Okay. Um. I mean, I would, I would tell him. I would like you are a human being. The problem no, is, he, is that he has to convince you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um. Say that like, shit to a black dude. Well, no, I mean, he could he could say it. I'm sure he probably would, but I would Over be Zoom, like, okay, say it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he'd probably say it to my face and relish the, the chance. But for me, I'm just like, you know, I would I would systematically go in and destroy everything that he holds dear. Like I would go like I my goal is not necessarily like to rob him of his, you know, um, to see, think that I can um, sort of convert uh, him or deprogram him. Or something. Yeah, deprogram him. I can't do that. But it's like the same thing, the same sort of philosophy argument that I have with like, you know, um, and I always do this, make this comparison, but it's it's very apt. But like um, the people who don't believe in um, who, who, flat earthers. Yeah, you brought you know, them up on the other show. <laughs> yeah, like they they don't believe in a round earth. They believe that every picture, every video, every scrap of anything that NASA ever has ever released is fake. They believe in a flat planet. And so, you know, they, and they have like, I've seen it's them. Breathtaking. Try, yeah. I've seen them, you know, and it's crazy because we're in a time where, where we literally just had a, a, the, the world's first flat earth conference where people paid $140. I looked this up, $140 for badges. And they came from all over the planet to do like lectures and uh, conferences Damn. about a, the, the flat earth. We need to get some money to send our boy Zart, our little intrepid reporter, (laughs) to this kind of shit. And like, like they were there and like, you know, but they'll say things like, you know, there's no such thing as gravity. Okay, I'm going to push you over. Why? Because you've got sucked into that's called fucking gravity, asshole. You know, they'll say things like, all right, the water doesn't bend. All right, let me get a glass of water. That, that water doesn't look bent to you. It's not bent around the fucking cup. You know what I mean? Like, what, where, okay, water doesn't bend. <laughs> well, again, I think I said this last time too. You can't reason someone out of a position they didn't reach through reason. Right. But so I, but at least can, my thing is to like show them like physically, yes. because most of those things, like you, like, like you said, most of the, the crazy things that these people believe are easily disprovable. So, like, I, I'll like, go, go ahead. Bring your crazy man. I'm all Get here. Get your James for it. Randy on. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Like James we'll just Randy's go through it point man. by point. We'll just do it, and I'll just like you know what? Okay, I've heard you. Uh, here's my response. Well, like in the uh, sense of the KKK <laughs> guest, I think back to when Howard Stern would have that Daniel Carver motherfucker on. Mm-hmm. That shit was amazing, and they would just let him say whatever dumb shit he wanted, and then they just laugh at him like you're a fucking idiot. Right, you're an idiot. So it's almost um, like just. Let them say their dumb shit and laugh at them. Right. And I'm not going to (laughs) interrupt the guy like when, you know, like he'll talk about it and be like, you know, this is my point, blah, blah, blah. You're not a human being because, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. All right. All right. Bet. All right. All right. 
Um, we so, should have an episode where you have Jack on your show. <laughs> oh, in, in character? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. No, that'd be yeah. terrible. That'd be Can terrible. we start doing these the interviews though with in we should do it in character on every interview. Jack? Fuck yeah. No, like he was saying, lean into it. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but also the be careful what you pretend to be in the end kind of shit. I don't know. It's uh it's pretend. interesting. Honestly, what I want to do is get Travis Scott to sue us. <laughs> and then everybody fucking is like, what is this movie? And then I keep sending 80% him of them pirate it, Instagram. but we make a few grand off it. And then we make another thing. And people are like, oh, the guys who made that Cactus Jack shit. And then you mark it off of Cactus Jack on the next project. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't we know. just need to get on his radar in some way. You got to make a big move, man. You can't, this little piddly, like every podcast you go on, as much as, I mean, I enjoy doing it and meeting cool motherfuckers like Rob here, but it's like, what do you get? Like two two prime orders, if you're lucky, out of a podcast or something. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, you know, I mean, Joe Rogan or some shit. I sent no, I mean, Travis Scott a DM. I sent him a bunch of DMs. On <laughs> did you? I did. Uh, with links to the movie. And one of them, I said... I said, so I'm supposed to be the racist, but you're responsible for killing more black people than me. Oh, my God. You said and I just need to hear back from him. Oh, I my God, bro. <laughs> did you consult with our Hollywood publicist before you made this movie? <laughs> no, that one oh, I did. I, I went rogue on that one. Well, I mean, to it me, like, work. it feels like, you know, maybe, you know, if you guys are able to, you know, like, if there is a way <laughs> so to... Um, make um, posthumous like like um like not that I, you know I want to make any more work for you guys to do, but if you want if you did like almost like uh you know counter um like a like this is the anniversary of the death of controversial figure Cactus Jack. You know, and you had like sort of man on the street interviews, like talking about, you know, like, you know, bring up clips from the Cactus Jack movie and be like, you know, you know, what is what do you think that, uh, you know, what this person said, you know, the fact that this person reached this kind of height, you know, before his death, you know, what do you think this says about the country? And, you know, like have people like go like push back against. But at the same time, you're using clips from the movie. And then you can put, so you're feeding both things. You know what I mean? You're sort of doing, you know, you could do both sides and you're just like, whoa, like the way that people do that. And then just put that up there, just like, like in random places. Yeah, like new, put it content, on- new content is cool, but yeah. it's still like into a fucking sea of oversaturated content. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like you got to do something to put a spotlight on you and make a big move, something strategic, calculated, um antagonizing travis scott to that point might not be it i don't know maybe it is i don't fucking know who knows like goldman said no one knows anything right but uh, yeah i think you need a just a new maybe you need just need a new poster with gull and like you know the the uh that either. one yeah 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 and the, thing, the shirtless but, one with the finger well yeah well no not just shirtless but like completely naked except for the the mask or something like that with the middle finger your dick just hanging out dude like that you know like just like dick swinging don't give a fuck there you go like you know what i mean probably he weighs jack. like 50 pounds more now <laughs> yeah <laughs> See? Motherfucker looks like a pow who came home from the war and got a lifetime supply of kfc and this is like five <laughs> years later <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do they do that? Uh, I don't know. Just they support the truth. Cracking, Jones, and um, you know, like you know that, like something. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I got to start wearing Travis Scott Cactus Jack merch. That'd be hilarious. These fucking podcasts. There's a big ass bling. It's like this big with fake diamonds of his logo, his ex Cactus Jack logo. A, a necklace I want to get. You should and be Travis got, like, Scott the for Halloween. And shit. <laughs> I want to start wearing his shit when we do promo shit for Cactus Jack. Just everything we can do to antagonize him. Not even him. I mean, the I mean, it sounds like him. him like though. you're yeah, just totally like the him. target of your ire. Um, but yeah, I just you know, feel like he's free promotion. I I don't feel one way or the other about Travis Scott. I just want, I just want him to say my name. That's what she said. <laughs> um. 
you know, like for me, like, I don't know, for me, like, um, I would just beyond like leaning into, um, you know, the, the sort of question corners of the internet that I would just be like, nah, I'm not going over there. Yeah. But like, you know, like places like Reddit, um, like, you know, if you're trying to like, I, I would think this movie would play really great to a Reddit audience. It seems like that. It almost feels like, like that should have been worked into the movie because this feels like a Reddit audience because Captain Jack as a figure would be a hero on Reddit in certain quarters of Reddit. Like, so to me, like, like that will be a place where I would set up shop. Um, Truth social. But Let's like, join Truth Social. No, you God. You go man on the street to like the next Trump rally and you walk around showing clips to people and saying, what do you think of what he just said? And get them to respond. Right. He's right. The Mexicans are taking our jobs. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know, right. whatever kind of shit Jack said. That's what you do. Because yeah. the whole viral man on the street Trump shit, you're basically doing like a Steven Crowder, but the other way. Yep. Yep. Like I would, I, I could definitely see you doing that. Uh, especially if you had like a booth where like you were showing like you were, you had like Cactus Jack, like, you know, like, like you know, things and stuff like that. And if people could buy merch, you know, and these more, <laughs> these motherfuckers didn't selling know DVDs. what they were buying these dumb motherfuckers selling DVDs and then being like, see, see, like that sort of thing. And you want to talk about how fast like liberals would jump on your fucking movie. Like you'd be, and you, they would, they would, that would, you know, that would get you like a, a big promotion where like people would like the liberals would lift you up on their shoulders and be like, look at this fucking movie these guys made. And they were showing it to these people for Trump rallies and be like, we told you they were like this. They fucking love this movie because they want to see like this type of shit. You know, yeah, what it'd I mean? be like, like purposefully misunderstood. Mm hmm. Um, like I would eyes. like <laughs> like if you did that, that that would be a viral thing. You would go then you, that's the type of thing that would end you up on like. Good morning, America. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a move, some Abby Hoffman shit, political theater, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like just the little media tours and talking about it and why we made it and all that shit. Fuck all that. We <laughs> should be jumping. Wild. We should be jumping all the all over TikTok with clips from this good. fucking movie. See, the thing is, you go around showing people, though, the clips of him in the mask, but it's you saying what do you think of what this guy says they don't even realize you're the guy in the mask etc there'd be another layer to it i yeah. could go around as claude leblanc exposing, <laughs> exposing jack not that we brought rob on here to do a fucking jack viral marketing brainstorm with us hey man you know like i'm happy to help like you know it's like, part of the process i would love to see that actually i would love to see you like go to like that would be immensely satisfying to me yeah, because i think I, like, that's I a love, move I mean, yeah because i love that true. uh that jordan peterson like finger on the pulse yeah like th those are some of my favorite things because they go in you know there's that one clip where they talk about that one guy in the maga hat who's just like i would like to know what president obama was doing um out of the oval office during 9 11 and you're like whoa yeah so there's a Borat whoa. or a bruno kind of thing to it you know right 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 exposing these motherfuckers and you just like the q anon dudes in that last Borat movie mm -hmm. <laughs> just cool. like insane like i said man like up on top like you know like climbing mount crazy and just can't see to sanity fair, anymore you could probably do a little bit of it to some crazy wacky folks on the left too a certain way you could probably ask them what they think of what he said and they might dig a hole for themselves saying some dumb shit too you know what i mean even if they're Depending refuting where, him, where, they'll what be refuting you're talking about yeah i'm just saying i don't know i don't know i just I, there's a lot of people on the left who say a lot of wacky shit there's some mm -hmm. lunacy on the left you know what i mean the thing is, though, is that like you like, like I think the, what the not necessarily the problem, but the thing is, is like you know when people talk about you know the radical left, you know they're always talking about like it's social. Uh, yeah, it's well, it's not even just social. Radical. It's like you know if you say that you are in support of universal health care, that makes you a part of the radical left, Which and I'm like, insane. right, yeah, yeah. exactly. So for me, I'm like, 
all right, that's that's just left. It's I'm not talking really about the people, who, the the microaggression crowd, all that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's the radical left. Like that's right. that's your true. But radical they're socially left. radical because they're not even concerned with the shit the real left is concerned with: mm-hmm. fiscal issues, policy. You know what I mean? Right. They're caught up in all this gamesmanship and shit. Those are the ones I think could start digging themselves a hole. You know. Right. And so that's my problem with when people talk about the radical left, I'm like, you, what you really mean is just the left. There's, there's nothing radical that, about social health care or police reform. Like if you've right. ever watched a video where you've seen cops plant evidence and then watch the four other cops around them not mind while they're planting evidence, you know what I mean? There's no way that you could say, all right, I see that. And that that's just fine. That's fine. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. it happens to one person, it's too many. Like that, that, like, that's not supposed to be how it works. Like we, I wouldn't want that to happen to any, I wouldn't want that to happen to a Nazi. You know what I mean? I don't want that for anyone. Well, I think of people on the right too. There's. You're alone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it cool if I start filming now? No, when we get inside. Why are you here? I just thought it was really interesting, you know, that someone hasn't left their basement in six months, not even to use the bathroom. Is that true? Why would I want to go out there? I got everything I need right here. You know how many aliases I've used calling into radio shows? I've had it up to my goddamn gills with the systematic feminization of this country. Aren't we important what you want to Get your own damn show if you think you got that much to say. Uh, you live in your mom's basement. Ah! What's so special about my loser son? You really do hate your own mother. She's a woman. Why wouldn't I? You know, there's some disconnect there, and, and if I could find it, what is hate? Where does it come from? Where does it go? It's the disguise. It's like pure hate, man. I want to see something really fucking cool. to you live from a studio audience. To the man who calls himself Cactus Jack, we have watched as you have rocketed to infamy. And you wonder why these cornered animals lash out. And now, we have watched as you have called for literal blood. I know you're out there listening. It's buzzing in your ears, burrowing into your brain. Do it, Jack. You're gonna love this. I pulled that trigger off his head. Your VPN will not shield you. The dark net will not hide you. You and your kind are finished. You think I'm scared of you? Come and get me! Might I be your neighbor? Neighbor? 